Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our first uh, Monday morning. Uh, I don't know. We're just going to call this the morning coffee. So something I want to start doing here for everybody is um, well, let me get this screen switched over uh, is to start doing some more live streaming. And um, what we're going to start doing here is for me. Um, in my corner of the world, it's a uh, it's Monday morning, and uh, what we're gonna do is just casually have a cup of coffee and uh, tie a couple of flies. Nothing in particular is gonna be on the agenda, um, but what we need to do is the underlying what do we want to call it? The underlying agenda is to boost my viewing time we hit that 1000 subscriber uh benchmark thanks to thanks to you guys and that is um very appreciative um unfortunately i can't do any kind of big kind of giveaway or you know celebration or anything like that because like the majority of everybody else i'm not made of a million dollars so yeah, I, I just have tons of gratitude for each and every one of you. Some of my subscribers have been around since day one, and it's just been a slow build growing up to that 1,000. Um, so once we hit, uh, you know, I think I believe it's it's 4,000 hours over the course of uh, 365 days, and. You know, if we grind out some live streams and we get some people to tune in, um, we'll easily hit that mark. And then I'll be able to, not to sound greedy, but monetize a little bit on this. Um, a lot of work goes into these uh, live streams and uh, just fly tying in general. And who knows, maybe someday if I uh, earn enough off of my YouTube videos, I'll actually be able to... Uh, reinvest into some equipment or buy myself a lunch someday uh, youtubers do not make much money at all um, but you know my my first and foremost uh, thing is to just be with everybody uh, be able to supply you guys some quality content it looks like I need to adjust mm. I've been messing around with the video settings for quite some time, and I don't know. So, this is going to be the first one. Um, you know, I got my cup of coffee right here. Uh, nothing fancy. Aldi. Dark. Dark, uh, dark roast. How do you like your coffee? I'm, I'm a dark, dark roast uh, with a couple of ice cubes on top. I don't like iced coffee, but I've burnt my tongue one too many times, and I'm I'm done with that game. So, anyways, uh, you know, fingers crossed. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, this coronavirus thing will. I know it's not going to disappear, but you know, I'm hoping by mid July I'll be allowed to roam about the cabin, roam about the country. Because my father and I, we have a, our annual trip is planned out to go to Montana and fish the Madison River. So, well, I think in conjunction with that, you know, what do we got to do? We got to keep ourselves prepared. So, I'm going back to... This is my, one of my very first fly tying books that I received. It was a gift from my father. Uh, the, fly pat or the Fly Patterns of Yellowstone, Volume 2, by uh, Craig Matthews and John Jurek. Jurek? Jurek. Jurek. However it's pronounced. Um, Craig and John. Um, good guys. I've actually met Craig a couple of times at his fly shop, the Blue Ribbon uh, Fly Shop there in West Yellowstone. Uh, and John, they've been there for 30 years. So uh, this is this is what I'm pulling my inspiration off of. Hey, we got 
the old man watching. Thanks, Dad. What do you know? So you drank the Paramount Dark Roast. You know, I really... One of my memories of living and working in Lansing was... Oh, by the way, thank you, Dad. Thank you for the book. Uh, one of my memories is working at the ballpark, the... It used to be Oldsmobile Park. I'm not sure what it's called now, but uh, anyways, we used to park in the Paramount uh, Coffee Roaster Facility back parking lot um, after hours or whenever we could get in there. And walking from that parking lot to the baseball stadium, oh man, it smelled so good. So. Uh, in preparation for that trip out to Montana this summer, um, you know, I got where'd my little fly box go. There we go. I'm starting, starting to sort things out. We're getting some flies tied for the Madison River, and what I'm going to start off with today is some serendipity. So let's head over to the bench and see what we got cooking. I'm working and adjusting with lighting and such. So um, it, it's going to be a constant struggle. I got this in a size 16. Uh, this is a Moonlit ML053, there it is. So let's go ahead and get a couple of these tied up. We have two chips, there we go. All right, let's get this going. So for me, it's morning. It's five after nine, and I guess my hope is to capture some of my international audience that is on the other side of the world, perhaps um, getting ready to turn in for the evening. And uh, my goal is, is to start this live stream every Monday right at about 9 o'clock. Um, my wife is working from home, so uh, yeah. It's a, this is a perfect opportunity. Uh, I just have a brown wax thread. I'm not exactly sure on the size of this. It's not labeled, but it seems to be about the right size. And I've got a 13 one hundredths um, fine gold wire we're going to use on this. So let's go ahead and get this guy tied in. Take that all the way to the rear. And this is one of those super simple fly patterns. Super stupid simple. And it's just a thread body and some wire. I'll just keep those thread wraps nice and even. Bada boom. So I think I need to take a few moments and adjust my lighting for this time of day. If anybody wants to donate a studio setup to me, that'd be pretty sweet. But until then, we're just gonna keep going with what we have. You know, I've, I'll never make the claim to be the best or the greatest, but. We make do with what we got, right? We'll take our wire all the way up front. And just a couple of wraps to lock that down. And then with our little nippers. So it looks like we got a couple more viewers tuning in. We got four or five. I know I'm one of them, because <laughs> that's how I can monitor the chat, so 
let's go ahead and check in. How we doing out there? Where where are we watching from? I know we got myself. I'm here in central Minnesota. My father's tuned in. He's coming in from uh, mid Michigan. Let's see, we got Jacob. Good morning, Jacob. Thanks for tuning in, man. Uh, really appreciate it. Where are you tuning in from, my good friend? Got to get our little wing here. And look at this nice light colored deer here. Watching from Alabama. Well, what's up, Bama? How you doing down there? Hope you guys are, hope you're a little bit inland. I guess we're going to be expecting quite the uh, hurricane season. Why not? It's 2020, so we'll just go bananas with that, I guess. Tiny little clump. Always clean your hair out, and sometimes, if so desired, I like to take my little brush and brush that out. All right. I don't want to tie it in. I'm going to tie this in with the, uh, let's see, tips. Tips go forward. And... I don't want the thickest part of the butt section, so I'm going to go just inside the tips, maybe about halfway. Alabama awesome well thanks for tuning in Jacob this is uh this is the very first of my Monday morning live streams I'm gonna start doing so set your alarm mark your calendar we're gonna be doing this for a little while the the reality is the truth is is one of the things that actually got me going in uh, the world of fly tying is my PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and um, they got me going with the fly tying and fly fishing through uh, Project Healing Waters. And, you know, with this staying at home and all this extra hoopla that we're going through as a society, um, it's getting harder for me to t sit down and tie flies sometimes, so... This is this is my motivation. This is forcing me to get out and tie some flies. And like I said before, I'm trying to boost my um, watch time. So if anybody feels like binge watching for a little while, go ahead and hit up one of my uh, playlists. We got a lot going on. I think we maybe went just a little too heavy on that deer here. Maybe, maybe not. What do you think, Dad? Hmm? I think that's just a little too much. But that was our first one for the day. First one for the year. That was the first time I've tied a serendipity for the year. So we'll just take a quick pause. This is not a speed tie thing. We're not trying to break any land speed records with our, uh, our fly tying. This is all about connecting with you, the viewers, and, of course, having my cup of coffee. So, yeah. That's uh, kind of my first attempt of 2020 with the serendipity. Ken... Konnichiwa. Hello. Good morning from Japan. So yes, Ken, my plan is 
to do this every Monday morning and uh, possibly maybe some other mornings uh, scattered in between. But I'm going to try to keep this regular schedule of uh, Monday mornings at this same time slot. Um, it's a good time for me because my wife is starting to go to work and I know she's upstairs on the computer and I want to tie some flies and I personally enjoy tying flies a little bit more when I know I can share that with somebody. For me, fly tying is almost a group experience. I like to fish alone, but I like to tie flies with other people. What can I say? Appreciate everybody tuning in this morning. We're having fun. Um, it's a beautiful day outside. We got the sun coming out, which means quite possibly some yard work. All right, so we've got Alabama in the house. We've got Michigan in the house. We've got Japan in the house. Uh, what am I gonna tie next? Well, this Wednesday, Wednesday night, uh, six o'clock central, I have uh, been tying my uh, ba -ba 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 flies for my Project Healing Waters crew, and I'm looking for my fly box that has those timber wolves. Anyways, our next pattern that we're going to be tying with that is going to be called a timber wolf, and it's a panfish pattern. And it's a question of where in the world did I put that fly box that has those in there. You know what? They are in my bag. Um, but yeah, we're going to tie another couple serendipities. Um, the guide serendipity and crystal serendipity. Yeah, why not? Um... Let me crank a couple of these out because I got to have a couple of these. Um, you know me. I love doing variations. But I really wish. I don't know. I'll share this with everybody. Something I just came across right there. Rest in peace, Grandpa Bill. Love you, dude. Uh, he was a heck of a fisherman. Not sure if he was much into fly fishing, but he sure had fun on the lake as kids growing up. All right, let's go ahead and just pop over, back over, and we'll just tie another fly. We'll do another, another round two. So yeah, as far as to what I'm going to tie next, honestly, I never really know. Um, maybe uh, I can pick a book and kind of go through a book. What would you like to tie, Jacob? What do you What do you fish for down in Alabama? Are you down there for them stripers, bass? Or that would be my guess. All right, so we our serendipity. We got a size 16. Uh, it's a wet fly hook. We got a brown thread. We're gonna do some gold wire and some deer hair. That's it. I'm always open for requests. Um, and I think if you want to uh, get a Monday, if you want to get a Monday morning coffee request in for next week, comment below um, after this video or this live session becomes a video. And then I'll be able to review that and uh, possibly add that to the repertoire. I'm always about exploring new patterns, new ideas, 
thinking outside the box. I don't think any anything should be ever really a hundred percent exact precise unless you're going for a presentation fly or anything like that you know unless you got those classic salmon fly patterns which are sweet those you gotta be uh gotta be pretty precise so my last so jacob jacob is uh chasing chasing the bass my man um yeah i love the bass my last bass that i caught last week uh unfortunately unfortunately it gives it gives you hope uh it was smaller than the sunfish that i was catching and the sunfish that i were catching could probably i don't know the sunny was the size of my hand, and the bass could probably slide into a deck of cards. Right into the box. Yeah, lots of, lots of largemouth at my uh, quote-unquote practice pond, a.k.a. the secret lake. Uh, yeah. Large mouth on the fly is so much fun. An iris caddis would be good. I'll need those in July. Yep. But you have to comment those <laughs> in the comment section after I push this video because these comments don't last. The chat does not exist after the chat disappears. I know. I got I got a list a mile long of flies to tie and flies that I need. But I've got so many flies already. I don't know. I'll clean that deer hair out just a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit closer to the tips on this one. I don't know, in my opinion, it just got a little bit too big on that last one. So hopefully later this week, I'm going to get out and chase my smallmouth. Uh, Minnesota is open and available for fishing. And we are ready for the smallmouth. Smallmouth season just opened up. Or back up. And this weekend was the opener. When it comes to openers, usually I'm at the Minnesota Elks Youth Camp uh, volunteering up there. So I, I usually never get uh, a fishing opener in. And fortunately, but fortunately, I guess, you know, this year we're not there. But that's on account of the coronavirus happening. So what do you think? <clears throat> I think that one came out just a little bit better. Um, just by adjusting where I tied in uh, that deer hair on top, I was able to uh, decrease the size of that puff of that diameter. Cause I don't know. 
how fast that's going to sink. It's going to be a slow sinker. Slow stinker. Tie that sucker in with a, a ze not a zebra, but a uh, prince. And that'll, that'll drop him down pretty quick, fast, and in a hurry. Your hair is crooked. That's all right. You know the thing about fly tying is, is you can never, never judge yourself, really based off of your first one. Your first one is, I don't know. It's like making love for the first time. You screw. Everyone's gonna screw it up. Uh, ah, tie another one. Tie another one. Tie, tie, tie. I always kind of get a kick out of the people on, on the social media, on Facebook, some of those groups. You know, this is my first attempt. Like, okay, well, tie another dozen, and let's see what the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, etc. Because each one is going to successively, quote-unquote, get better. You know, at a certain point, you're going to start going with variations or... I think sometimes if you don't have the exact material for that recipe, it's not a recipe for disaster. That's a recipe for success because that's going to force you to think outside of the box and try to replicate something that you've seen with stuff that you have. So, yeah. It's a beautiful morning once again. Here in central Minnesota. What should be my first fly that I uh, toss from my smallmouth? You know, actually, <laughs> instead of asking you guys, I need to ask Brad. Uh, my buddy Brad's been out already. He and his wife uh, went out for a fishing opener this weekend, and they got on the bass. But they said it was a little slow moving because of the cooler weather. I'll have to uh, check and see what the uh, flow rates are for the Mississippi. I can't do it on my phone right now because the phone is my camera that's trained in on that fly. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and tie another one because that's what we're doing. We're having coffee talking to you guys this is uh are my monday morning coffee live streams are just going to be a little bit more relaxed and uh a little bit more chilled so jacob has suggested maybe a deer hair popper you know that's a good that's a good, you know what, we're going to work on that. And um, I tell you what, Jacob, next Monday, next week, tune in. We're going to be spinning deer hair. Um, that's going to require me to do some major cleaning on my bench. Because, as you know, that deer hair is mm, explosive. It goes everywhere. It's it's like this virus. It's like the, you know, people don't understand how germs and stuff spread. They've never tied flies with flash and hair because that stuff, no matter how hard you try, will end up somewhere in the house. You'll be sitting there on the opposite side of the house and you're like, what is that twinkle? Oh, that's a little bit of flash. Oh, what's that? What's that random piece of deer hair? So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna clean off our bench next weekend and be in full preparation to do some spun deer hair because full disclosure, I'm not the greatest at spinning deer hair. Um, so it, it is what it is. You get what you get. Um, like I've always said, I've never claimed to be the best or the greatest at anything, uh, just to be myself. And we'll get through it, um, come heck or high water there, uh, next Monday. 
So next Monday, uh, everybody tune back in. We're going to be doing some uh, deer hair poppers. And I might tie, a, might, I might, might warm up a little bit before then. Between now, between now and then, I might tie a few, but I might not. I might just send it as it is. Cause I mean, I've I've spun deer hair, and I've tied some deer hair poppers, but I mean, there's there is a big difference. I keep this one. I keep this one around as kind of inspiration motivation I'll put this one up on the yeah I mean that's I did not tie that but I keep it around I don't fish it just so I can keep an eye on it learn from it I mean that is that's thick so we're gonna just set that guy back off to the side. We'll put him up there for now. We're tying uh, serendipities today, so let's go ahead and pop that camera back over. So we are using size 16s. get our gold wire it's a 13 one hundredths take that bad boy to the rear and we'll carefully work our thread back forward Right about there. All right, let's go ahead and wrap our wire, our ribbing. Nice and even, take your time. So last night, my wife and I watched Pirates of the Caribbean. Was a fun one. Through these uncertain times, I found myself watching a lot of, I don't know, I like new movies, but man, these classics are just fantastic. There we go. I'm not a fan of the helicopter. I'm, I really don't like helicoptering my wires off. Um, you know, obviously, if I did not have my wire nippers, um, I never. I, I would. I, I probably would helicopter. But don't use the tips of your scissors. If you do want to cut your wire, open that jaw all the way up, and use that piece right there as your wire cutter. Save the tips paid good money for your scissors right let's take care of them I know some fly tires actually have you know just different scissors for just straight up different material I mean they've got their hair scissors they've got their feather scissors they got scissors for everything it out just like 
that. Uh, rotate your. Let's tie this guy in about there. What you can do is you can get yourself a little helper. Nope. Too big. Build that up just a little bit, a little bit of a head. I think that'll work. Sally Hansen, a little bit of the secret sauce. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we have it. soak in there set it and forget it Try to get that camera just right sorry if you're feel like you're riding in a boat I like it. I think I do. So there we are. Monday morning, having our coffee, having our chat. We've established next week for our second Monday morning coffee, we're going to be doing some deer hair poppers. That should be fun. Still got some coffee to drink here, and uh, we still got plenty of time to live stream. I was thinking about having a fly tying marathon live stream to just... I don't know, see where a YouTube maxes out for live stream length. And I don't know, sit down and tie for six hours as a live stream. What do you think about that? Six hour live stream tying flies? How, how long could I go? I'd have to get up and... Uh, stretch my back and my legs a couple of times but and it's a little bit uh, a little bit of mm, added work reaching over the camera and 
kind of fly. It's kind of kind of weird actually not having a camera in between myself and the vice. So let's see. Who do we still have? Um, let's see. It looks like we still have six. Six minus me is five or four. I don't know how many it counts for me as a, a viewer because I've got my iPod turned on with the stream. That way I can monitor the chat from the bench because my computer is actually behind me because I don't have that kind of room. Uh, somebody's trying to call me on my phone. And guess what? I'm not going to answer it. That's the thing is... These days, I just don't answer the phone anymore. Let it go to voicemail. Unless I unless I recognize the number, recognize who you are. I don't know. What else should we do during these uh, Monday morning coffees? I was thinking about maybe possibly checking out some books let's see here I had a fun book sitting around where did it go ah uh, yes this is a book called it's called The Trout, The Whole Trout, and Nothing But The Trout. Now, this is a fun book. I would recommend this one. It's got all sorts of uh, funny little comics and cartoons. Don't take it too seriously. Anyways, what do you think? Tie another fly, or uh, let's do that. We're gonna. Whoa! Just about dropped the coffee. Don't want to do that. Ah, the fly tying Bible. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Where is that one? Yeah. The Fly Tying Bible. This is a good, I, I, I would definitely make this a must have. Um, I mean, anything called the Fly Tying Bible is pretty dang good. Yeah, we can tie some flies out of this. We can tie some deer hair poppers. Gosh. I don't know. It, it's, it, it's interesting because here I am sitting on YouTube trying to make content for people to watch for fly tying. And I watch a little bit of fly tying YouTube videos, but that's not my main interest for YouTube. Um, when I'm looking for stuff to tie, I, I hit the books. Imagination is your only limitation. Um, a fly tire's bench without books is like a house without windows. You need it. Otherwise, you are just stuck inside and I don't know this is a great book partially because of how, how it's bound uh, it just lays nice and flat 
Uh, peeping caddis. Ooh, you know what? A peeping caddis. I'm gonna leave. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna tie some of those later too. So peeping peeping caddis. that add that on deck things to tie but we're going to continue on with some serendipity we got to get a few of these knocked out today because believe it or not i'm going to need more than just one <laughs> all right let's hop back over to the bench i like my little camera setup being able to kind of bounce back and forth um, you know, I really want the main focus to be on the vice, on the fly, because that's that's what we're here for, right? Let's go ahead and cut this little one off. And I will say the quality of the videos it it gets a lot more difficult to manage and maintain. You know, a super high def whatever you want to call it HD on a size 16 I mean when I'm tying a, a two watt popper which we're gonna be doing there I don't know if it's gonna be too hot what hook would you recommend Jacob for our spun deer here what hook do you like it's like I said I'm not most of my poppers are foam. I I'm into the foam popper game. This is this is one of my favorites. I really love this black and yellow. So he hangs out on the bench. Red wire hair. Super simple, super easy. Nice and clean. Also, ladies and gentlemen, how do we feel about the background music? Is it too much? Too little? I like to have, you know, something relaxing, calming, neutral. I don't want, you know, rock and roll or anything. Tapping, foot tapping, super big foot tapping. But we have to also keep our, our music selection neutral and generic. And I keep going, I, I don't know. I look at the um, YouTube music library and I'm constantly looking for stuff to uh, oh, use your brain, Aaron. Something simple enough to just kind of have a repetitive loop without it, you know, the beginning and the end. I want to just kind of seamlessly blend together in Splenda. Straight shank mustad. Well, I think I might. I got some wide gaps. I think they're mustard. They might be Tiempos. I used those. What did I use those what for the last fly that I tied? Not the past night, not the Kulix fly the day, or the Patriot. I don't know. That's part part of the reason why I I, I started publishing and doing fly tying on YouTube is so I personally have something to go back and reference.
when I tie my hair, I start just a little bit closer. I favor my this side of the bend a little bit. Or not the bend, but the shank. Because as I add tension, the material kind of rolls up and over. And you just want to be able to keep control of that madness. So before we go too far, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to hit that like button, that big, as the other YouTubers say, smash that like button. What that does is that helps uh, the YouTube algorithm computer into getting these videos in front of people just like you. And if you like something, should share it. So I hope some of you guys and gals might do me the solid and share this video once we get this out there. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors. Aaron is going to be live streaming um, Monday mornings, having a cup of coffee. That's what it's really about. Just getting together. do it and we can pop back over here and say hi everybody a little bit of a delay it looks like I don't know what the delay looks like between my my voice we got two different cameras Th actually we have three cameras running one's not being used because that's just part of the laptop. When everything's up and running on this machine, it's, it, it definitely slows, slows its roll down. We got YouTube's running, the webcam's running, my phone's running with a IP-based webcam. Oh yeah, that's a lot of a lot of computing power happening, and then the o OBS is running. The lots of lots of technical things happening to make this all work. And why do we do it? Because I enjoy sharing my fly time with everybody. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are what time zone you're in, whether you're fishing for a trout, a bass. It doesn't matter. I'm here for you guys and gals. Yeah. So where are we at? We're almost at an hour, but we're going to keep plugging along because I've got maybe about right about there on the coffee right about there we got a little bit to go we got about this much more to go ladies and gentlemen all right well we'll slide back over
thread handy. going to switch to a red dot. We'll just have to be a little mindful on our thread wraps. I don't want to go too bananas with this and we this is not as heavily waxed as that previous thread we're using. So things to pay attention to and things to consider while we're tying. Now you can get away with variations and things like that there but you just have to learn how to control your material and uh, have it do what you want it to this ribbon forward. Thing. And then we'll jump over to our deer hair. And so when I'm picking off my deer hair, let's see if I can just push it to go out of focus on that. I use my bodkin. Cut it nice and close to the hide, you'll be able to get a longer length of your material in addition to kind of setting yourself up for success later. about stacking because we're trimming the ends we're tying it in by the tips a little bit spin my thread counterclockwise or anti-clockwise whichever direction you want to call it kind of help flatten that out it can be a little difficult to see. So what do we think of the red, huh? I like it. And just like that. I like it. I like the red. What do you guys think? Yeah, buddy. Let's do another red. We'll just roll right into it. We like the red. Oh, let's add a little dab of Sally Hansen's. You know, I, I have plenty of 
plenty of UV resin available. That's that's not a question, but you know, in this application, I'd rather have this uh, soak into everything just a little bit more than just giving myself that superficial top coat. Hashtag awesome. Put you up in the drying rack. Ken, what time is it for you? I know it's what, Tuesday? Already? Or is it? No, it's Monday night. It's Monday night. I believe it's Monday night in Japan. Monday evening. I'll have to check my world. I wish I had a clock in front of me um, that has the different Tokyo, France, L.A., New York. I wish I could see all those different time zones all at the same time. Because when we're live streaming on YouTube, we are hitting the worldwide audience. I remember when I first started uh, publishing videos and stuff on YouTube, looking at the analytical data, um, you know, all the different countries where people are watching, I had uh, quite a few views from Mongolia, and uh, my, I'm just trying to like figure out, it's like, oh, who and how did somebody in Mongolia come across my fly tying videos and why are they continuing to watch them? That is just absolutely awesome. Uh oh. I felt that. I ticked that thread and I could see. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it got a little fuzzy there. But we're going to go over this with the red thread. Or not the red thread, but the. Uh, 12 May in Japan. Yeah, so it's Tuesday. Tuesday. Well, my thoughts and prayers to each and everybody out there during, during these uncertain times of COVID-19. You know, it's up to everybody to just kind of I don't know, like the sign says at my park, where I, my secret lake is located, it says, use sound judgment. Use, practice social distancing. So, you know, I just hope everybody's being smart about it. You know, whether you're doing this or that, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what to do. That's not my place, but it is my hopes that everybody just remains safe and happy and healthy. Because when this is kind of done, not even done steamrolling through our, our, our planet, eventually we're all going to get this bug one way or another. But... I'll wait. I'll hold off on that. Let's go ahead and clean our hair. Because in the end, all we can do is control our own actions and how we respond to our own environments. This is my escape. This 
is my happy place. One of my happy places. I got happy places. See, that's the thing. If you're going to have a happy place, why have just one? Have multiples. You know, when I'm sitting here having a bad time, I need to visualize myself in a happy place. And I'm sitting in a happy place. What in the world? You can have more than one happy place. Nobody will hold that against you. I'm sitting here tying flies, sharing it with my worldwide audience here on YouTube. Some of you I've, are friends, some of you are family, some are in between, some are complete strangers, but we're all in this together. Let's see here, a little dab of insurance policy. it oh we even have Jessica in the house good morning Jessica you doing good upstairs <laughs> I'm doing good downstairs we're doing good that is a little red uh, serendipity It almost looks like it has a little, I don't know, kind of like a Coca Pelli spike sticking out of its head. I don't know. Well, I think this is, we're going to wind this down. We're, we're down to our last few sips of coffee. I might just, just chill and talk to my peoples. Oh, Jess is on a 15-minute break. Already? Hmm. Well. What do you think, Jess? Should we tie another one? How about this? How about I take a quick, quick break, and I will be right back because I want to go say hi to my wife. Give her a quick hug. She's on a 15-minute break. I'm not going to take a 15-minute break. I'm just going to run upstairs, go say hi. And I'll be right back. And we'll finish our coffee. And we'll tie maybe another fly or two. So how about that? Yeah, it was her turn. Use it or lose it. All right. We're going to be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Quick break.
right, and we are back. All right, there we are. We're back. Let me get the screen set up and get that set up. So yeah, Mama had to take a quick break, and I went up and said hi to her. And full disclosure, this is my second cup of coffee. Um, so yeah, we're having a good time. We're going to start doing this every Monday, right at about 9 o'clock. Thereabouts. So, you know, if you're a subscriber, hit that little um, alarm bell notification and switch it to all notifications. And that way you'll get a little heads up as to uh, when we start these live streams. So, all right, we're going to we're going to keep on keeping on. I've, I'm I'm kind of recharged now. Got to say hi to Jess, and that uh, gave me a little, uh, a little boost of energy. All right. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I'll slide that back over, and uh, here oh, we go. I like that. I like the red. Let's do another red one. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully in the next few days or so, I am gonna head out to the Mississippi River and chase my smallmouth. But for whatever reason, I wanted to tie something small this morning. Yes, Timberwolves will be uh, this Wednesday night. My samples that I have of my Timberwolves are, I believe they're up in the truck. They're up at the Ford F1 fly box, as I refer to it. Big Red Fred. And I went out to the lake the other day going for panfish. Couple of sunnies, got a couple of crappies on. They haven't quite moved up to their beds yet. They haven't made their beds yet. I always like seeing the fish beds. They look like elephant footprints. Yep, for this Wednesday's live stream, Wednesday night, I have already created the live stream. So there, there might be a placeholder out there saying this stream will begin in X amount of days or hours or whatever. I'm not really sure what it looks like on, uh, on the other end of things. I don't know. You know, we're not we're not the big fly shop. We're not the big uh, production company here. We're just me, myself, and I in my basement. We're not getting out and about. I love teaching in group settings. It's just so much fun tying tying flies with other people. Especially when everybody is on a different level. Because as much as I like to think that, you know, I know what I'm doing, there's always so much more for me to learn from whoever's sitting next to me. 
and whether you've been tying five minutes or five days or five years or five fifty years who cares I could probably learn something from you even if I'm just teaching you so I, I just just don't think a lot of people really realize how much teachers learn by teaching If you ever really want to put yourself on the spot, Ty Flies Live, Murphy's Law will say hi every single time. You know, that's, I think that's why I've kind of started gravitating towards these live streams because it is what it is. It's unedited, raw footage of an actual fly tires bench and this is what it is this is how I do it you might do it differently and that's okay somebody else might do it completely different and that's okay too there's no right or wrong my only kind of rule of thumb when it comes to fly tying is keep the pattern relative to itself and what that means is if you're tying on a small hook, tie a small fly. If you're using a big hook, tie a big fly. But keep everything proportionate and relative to itself. And, and you can't go wrong. You'll, you'll win every single time. You know, every fly is guaranteed to catch a fish. Sometimes it just depends on where the fish is, what the time of day is, what the moon phase is, is if the fish is hungry, if you presented it to the fish correctly. You know, there's so many other variables other than how you tied your fly. It, it's, it's amazing. You know, so never judge yourself too critical on your fly tying ability because the odds are it, it, it comes down, it really comes down to the presentation and the water and how you fish it. Because me, I'm not going to brag, but I tie pretty good flies. They do catch fish. I know this because the, the flies I give to other people catch fish. I don't catch a lot of fish, but my flies do. So, let's see, what do we got here? Lee Bowman. I'm not sure what Lee Bowman means. What does that mean, Lee Bowman? Is that you? Message retracted, redacted. Okay, that's okay. Redacted, retracted. Well, thanks for tuning in, um, Will Bowman. Ah, appreciate it. Because here we are. It's Monday morning. I'm having some coffee, tying some serendipities. We did some brown ones earlier. Now we're on to uh, some reds. And, I don't know, how many we got? We got one, two, three it's tough to tell the difference in the colors because uh, well trying to keep up well I can slow down I can slow I can slow down first you take the hook and put it in the vise and then you take your thread oh, just kidding all right, Jess, have fun. Get back get back to work. Oh, we're having a good time. I'm having a good time. How about you? It's Monday morning for me. But we are broadcasting live around the world. Because we're on the World Wide Web there, don't you know?
Oh, you're trying to change how your name is seen. Hmm. Well, I can see by your little picture or whatever thing you got the... I don't know if it's the Steelers or just the steel symbol by itself. Pittsburgh? Pennsylvania? Amish country? Chocolate? Oh yeah, I, I'll probably tie a few more of these later today too, hopefully. But this is, this Monday morning live stream is going to be my, you know, one of my motivations for me to tie flies for me and you and share it with you. But, you know, Wednesday night is kind of dedicated to my Project Healing Waters program. Keeping those viewers in mind because uh, my Wednesday night live stream uh, was created based off of my Project Healing Waters program uh, getting temporarily paused, canceled, whatever you want to call it. Because um, we used to meet out at the at the VA hospital every Wednesday night. We used to teach and tie Canton, Ohio. A while, while, while. I hope you're not a Buckeye fan. Oh, man. Because I won't tell you that I'm originally... <laughs> I grew up in uh, Lansing, and I, I bleed green and white. It's all good. Nobody's playing sports right now. <laughs> tough. It's absolutely got to be tough. I like Ohio. The Ohio River Valley. Some say that the Ohio River Valley is almost as critical to the nation's infrastructure is the Mississippi. See what I do for a little added stability? Use both hands to help guide my scissors. So we're going to be coming up on lunch here soon. And thinking for lunch for Mama Jess, she's going to get leftovers chicken and asparagus. I'm not sure about myself. I think I might just kind of keep it simple and have some soup. Maybe a vegetable beef. All right, we got a whip finish. I mean, I am just absolutely ecstatic that um, we've got people joined in. 
especially since there was really no big announcement on what this was going to be. And we're still establishing what this is going to be um, on these Monday morning morning coffee fly tying sessions. Uh, the fly pattern we are tying, it is a serendipity. And some variations thereof. So far we've tied them in a uh, brown, we've tied them in red. And I might just shift gears here. Do a couple in an olive done. First we're gonna add just a little dab, a little dab of glue ya. So we've just recently, on this YouTube channel, we've just recently hit that 1,000 subscriber mark, which has elevated me to, from, I believe it was graphite to sapphire, not, not sapphire, opal. Mm -hmm. Maybe sapphire to opal. I don't know what the previous level was called, uh, but we have now reached the opal level YouTube creator status. And I actually got a cool little email from uh, YouTube. Congratulations, all tied up fly tying school. You've reached 1,000 subscribers. I remember how excited I was when I hit 100. And now we're here at 1,000. And, you know, it's not, it's not about the numbers. You know, when it When it all comes down to a push comes to shove, it's I'm looking for I'm pulling up my uh, my, my my book that I pulled this pattern out of. This is from the fly patterns of Les Yellowstone. Let's go ahead and jump back over to here. Where'd my mouse go? Uh oh, she's dead, Jim. My mouse died. Okay, well we'll go with this one. Let's go to here. Okay. So, da, 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 da. so this is the book we're pulling this out of. This is There we go. Fly patterns of Yellowstone Volume 2. John Jarek. Anyway, um, let's see. Where did I get this from? Let's pull this up. Uh, serendipity. Page 60. Page 60. So, according to the recipe... See the three dollar serendipity. These are uh, size sixteen to twenty. Uh, brown thread, fine gold ribbing, and a short clump of deer hair. The guide serendipity is a uh, black thread with a body of a green cat as xenon, slightly twisted up to form a segmented effect and a short clump of uh, Zelon for the head. And then we have the Crystal Serendipity, which is a rusty done with a uh, pearl crystal flash, three or four strands ribbed with fine gold or silver wire. Yeah, this is, yeah, the fly pattern I am using or the, the hooks I'm using is size 16. Uh, when you get out to the rivers, uh, the Madison River, and into the Yellowstone area, um, apparently smaller is better. My, my father will be able to uh, concur and agree that, you know, 
Usually he's, well, maybe you should size that in a size 20, size 18. Uh, it is what it is. Good morning, Steve Trybowski. Thanks for tuning in. Can't stay, but he's got to take his grandson somewhere. Oh, he's got to help. Got to help with schoolwork. Well, good luck with that schoolwork. You know, hats, tip of the hat. You know, helping the uh, helping the grandson learn. I mean, like I said, we're in uncertain times, but we can all do this together. Um, I don't know. I got a hook in the vise. Maybe I'll tie another one. Another variation. Right now, as far as variations, the only thing I've changed is the uh, thread. And we're going to do that once more. We've tied some brown, we've tied some red, and we're going to do some of this olive dun. Dun, dun, dun. I remember when I first got into fly tying and fly fishing, and you know, people are talking about duns. I'm like, dun did what? Last day of school. Well, congratulations. Uh, what are we, what level are we done, or are we done? Are we graduating from? Are we graduating from high school, college? Are we just done for the semester? What's going on? Congratulations on reaching the end of the period. I, I can't imagine being, you know, in a student right now in high school or college or anything like that. I just, I don't know. It's interesting. So here we are. This is what we're doing. We're tying flies. A bit of gold ribbing. Nice and even. We'll tie it to right about there. Nice clean cut. Just a little bit of deer hair, a small clump. But what do we do with our hair? We clean it. down there we'll have to clean it up a little bit all right let's go ahead and go 
kill their head. That'll do it. I wonder which of these colors is going to be the most productive for me in July. The tan, the red, or the olive. Ha 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 ha. I like that. Do that. All right. All right. So I think we might wind this down. We've been at it for an hour and 41 minutes. With a quick break, and we are out of coffee. So I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. We're going to start doing this um, every Monday morning. Monday morning for me. And I'm going to sit down, enjoy a cup of coffee, and interact with you folks. Because I need some interaction time. I need, I need to be able to, even though I can't see you all, just seeing your names and stuff flip through the chat um, gives me a little bit of sense of connection even though we're hundreds if not thousands of miles apart um, from my bench to yours um, you know it's it's pretty good Zinga. We'll flip that over to the outro credits because that's how we roll. I'm kind of a stickler. I like things to be lined up. It's good. We're having a good time. We're going to do this again next week, next Monday, right at about 9 o'clock-ish. Um, what else? This Wednesday. Join me this Wednesday. We're going to do a uh, live stream Wednesday, 6 o'clock Central, Earth Time, Project Healing Water Special. We're going to be tying Timberwolves. Great little panfish pattern. So yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Stay healthy, stay safe, happy time, tight lines.